everyone, welcome to the Damn Fan Channel. Today we're reviewing some DCYA content. This time actually we're reviewing it and not just reacting to it. Trust me, this is going to save a lot of time because we're looking into all three of the Kami Garcia Teen Titans run in DCYA comics. I have noticed that some DC young adult comics leave off on a cliffhanger, but this is the only time it actually led to another book that I'm aware of. It starts here with Raven, then Beast Boy and Beast Boy loves Raven. But then I also heard there's a fourth one on the way focusing on Robin. But for now, we'll just focus on the trio here. All these books were written by Kami Garcia and drawn by a relatively famous Teen Titans fan artist who is known for drawing the Teen Titans in more casual settings which definitely fits for this run, since this is a casual version of the Teen Titans. At the beginning, we see Raven in the car with her foster mom getting into a random car crash. How original. Immediately after the crash, Raven can't remember anything about her life anymore, including her superpowers. So the book focuses on her going to high school and slowly recovering the secrets of her powers while also getting to know a new hot guy in school. And yes, there's a school dance. How original. There's also this very strange aside scene regarding the dance where a lesbian couple call some other girl homophobic because she didn't assume they were dating. Dating. Bruh. Anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. In the end, it turns out the hot guy was working for Slade to recruit her along with other gifted kids. And the hot guy's betrayal causes Raven to be emotionally weakened, enough for Trigon to try to take over her body and cross into our world. But as it turns out, the family of Raven's foster mother, who had been watching over her, are also voodoo witches. So they call upon the souls of their other voodoo witch ancestors to help protect Raven. And yeah, it's kind of weird. I think what Garcia was attempting to do here is make a call back to the souls of Azeroth protecting Raven and you know, while watching over her and stuff like that. But then just decided to, to make them black voodoo witches. <laughs> for some reason. Regardless, with their help, uh, Raven is able to regain control and stand up against Trigon, and yay, happy ending, sisters before misters, am I right? The second book is all about Beast Boy, and has the smallest teeny teeny title you've ever seen in your life. You probably wouldn't even know if it was a Beast Boy book if you just... <laughs> like that. So in this book, Garfield, Garfield Logan, attends normal high school life, dreams about being a part of the popular crowd. How original. But unfortunately, due to taking these vitamins his parents have always given him, he's yet to go through his growth spurt, which causes him to be seen as the funny little guy rather than taken seriously. So one day he finally decides to stop taking the vitamins, and not only does he notice a sudden growth spurt, but he also begins to develop his superpowers, which he uses to get closer to the popular crowd. How original. This book, in comparison to Raven, is a lot more confused and unfocused. Whole plotline about Beast Boy stealing a python mascot that doesn't really go anywhere. Beast Boy lets these rabid dogs free to save them from being put down and almost kills a little girl. They encourage donating to Beta in this book, which is no. not something you ever want to do if you actually care about animals. Uh, then randomly in the end, Beast Boy saves a bunch of kids at a bonfire by turning into a bear, protecting them from a bunch of wolves that randomly attack. Yeah, this is supposed to be the climax of the story, I guess, but it really doesn't connect to any of the other things that happened in this book. And then after that, Beast Boy and Raven are both going on a trip to find Slade, which leads into our next book where they both meet. Beast Boy loves Raven. Their trip to meet Slade causes them both to cross paths in this book. They end up hanging out and enjoying each other's company until one night a guy tries to stab them. Garfield steps in, protects them from Mr. Stabby. He uses his superpowers to do so, but while trying to resist changing into a bear in front of Raven, because she doesn't know about his, super, his superpowers, she don't know about him. He somehow, like, resisting his superpowers gives him a fever? Wait a minute! 
plot reason. So the next day, they finally go their separate ways to meet up with Slade. Instead, they find themselves being kidnapped into a black van. The people who kidnap them begin to perform some sort of experiments on the two of them that force them to use their superpowers. Lucky for them, Robin and Raven's foster sister, <laughs> randomly, have been following them the whole time, and then they come to their rescue, and yay, happy ending. For a book that marketed itself on the romance of Beast Boy and Raven, I was a little disappointed at how basic and uninteresting the romance was written. These two are perfect opposites that can bounce off each other really well, but Garcia really doesn't take advantage of that aspect. In fact, their personalities in general throughout all these books are pretty watered down to the point where it makes it difficult for them to bounce off of anybody really bland <laughs> in comparison to like how they are in in the comics or even the cartoon to give a basic review of all of these books i'd say in the grand scheme of dcya these are probably some of the least offensive and most well written even though they are very basic and unspectacular beast boy loves raven would probably be the best of the three, Beast Boy being the worst. I mean, can you really blame me for putting this at the bottom? <laughs> None of the plot points even connected to each other. Funny enough, I do actually kind of prefer this version of the characters in comparison to what we got in the live action Titan show. They're both more casual versions of these superheroes, but I like how this version leans into more of like a Smallville style of doing things as opposed to trying to mix and do this weird half and half mixture of it's just like the comics but also more casual. They're not great but they're passable, which is more than I can say about most of the DCYA content out there. Let me know if you've read these books, well, what you think of them, if there are any other DCYA comics you'd like me to cover, or just search for them on the channel, because chances are I've already covered it. At some point, I'm going to be known for being the one-stop shop for all DCYA cringe content. Like the video if you did enjoy and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. If you would like to read a comic that's funny and wholesome for young adults, I can recommend my latest comic to you, which released digitally on the website this month and will have print copies available on February 1st. It's called It's Not Like Getting a Job Will Kill You. It's about a man who goes out to get a job and instead finds himself roped into the mafia. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check this out and other comics on Burning Star Comics join the fan club and check out sneak peeks of all the newer comics I'm coming out with in the future. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye! Program restart.